There are no shortages when it comes to the strange and bizarre creatures that we can encounter while exploring Big Mountain. But there is an enemy that you might consider to be normal, although these humans have been through an alteration of the mind. Their brains have been scrambled, and now they have a permanently aggressive disposition to most other living things. Originally, lobotomites were to be introduced in Fallout 1. The playable character would have been overrun by several of the mentally challenged fiends, only to be rescued by a renegade Brotherhood soldier. That idea was scrapped and lobotomites were set aside until making their first actual appearance over a decade later in Fallout New Vegas' Old World Blues DLC. Before we even see such a thing, we are introduced to the idea of a lobotomite, as we ourselves, upon entering the DLC, have received our very own free lobotomy. Speaking to our captors, for lack of a better word, we are told that our brain, along with other body parts, such as our heart and spine, have been surgically removed and replaced with state-of-the-art technology by the Sinks Auto Dock. The reason behind this cruel operation was the think tank's desire to create a servant that would complete basic tasks and keep the facilities nice and clean. By kidnapping those who found their way to the crater, either accidentally or intentionally, and swapping out their brains for Tesla coils, they could achieve just that. To ensure that their heinous and inhumane experiments remained a secret to the outside world, they have made it so only those with a functioning brain inside a living body can go beyond the radar fence that surrounds Big Mountain, effectively trapping the lobotomites into a life of servitude, but also trapping themselves as well. The brains that were removed were intended to be kept safe in storage where it would still function and send signals to the Tesla coils inside the donor's skull. But there was a major problem with the auto dock, and instead of removing the brain, it would scramble it, rendering it useless, meaning it could no longer send signals to the body, and instead of a subservient drone, an aggressive troglodyte was made. The scientists could not figure out the problem, and many of these lobotomites were created and discarded, left to roam the crater alongside the other unfortunate creatures the scientists had also made. So, how was the courier able to think and act with a greater level of comprehension when so many others had been mentally damaged beyond repair? For that, we can thank Benny. As the bullet they placed inside the courier's skull, the very same bullet that Doc Mitchell removed, left scars on their brain that the Sinks Auto Doc had never encountered before, and due to this new interaction, it was forced to correct its own programming. Instead of scrambling the courier's brain, it was successfully removed, and the still intact brain was flushed to the Forbidden Zone to be stored and through Tesla coils inserted inside the courier's now hollow skull, consciousness could be transferred between the two, and the perfect lobotomite was created. But what about those that came before? Well, those that were unfortunate enough to make their way here, they were placed inside the auto dock, their brains were torn to pieces and replaced with Tesla coils that had no brain to connect to. As such, they were considered unfit for duty and left to roam their miserable prison until death. Those that have tried to traverse the invisible barrier that contains them here, as well as those that have strayed too close, have felt their minds slip as the electrodes within their skulls begin to pop. This has been known to outright kill the subject, but it can also be less lethal, rendering the escapee with memory loss and nerve damage, but still trapped nonetheless. Those with no brain to connect to are still capable of completing simple tasks – eating, drinking, opening and closing doors, walking and fighting. They often travel in groups of three and can be seen using an assortment of weaponry. Most of them use melee weapons, such as the Saturnite Fist or Proton Axe, which requires less understanding compared to firearms. Yet there are lobotomites that show a greater level of comprehension and settle for ranged weapons instead, preferring to attack from a distance, showing they not only understand how to use a firearm, but also how different guns require different ammunition. To protect themselves, they wear glorified rags in the form of jumpsuits, or even the very garbs they were wearing when their minds were broken by the faulty autodoc. 
Dr. Dala, one of the scientists at the think tank, refers to the lobotomites as skinvelopes. She has been observing them for quite some time and has discovered that when two lobotomites are left together, there is a 43% chance that they will either fight for dominance or inject bodily fluids into each other's orifices. But what happens when three lobotomites are left together? Dala doesn't provide an answer, but I'm sure we can use our imaginations to fill in the orifices, I mean gaps. Despite not being fit for their intended purpose, the think tank has still found a way to make use of their human resources at the X8 biomechanical testing facility, splicing them together with dogs and robots to create something new or something dead. The lobotomites that have yet to be repurposed have come together to make a home for themselves, aptly dubbed the Cuckoo's Nest. This is of course a reference to the 1962 novel by Ken Casey, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, where the protagonist becomes a patient at an Oregon psychiatric hospital and attempts to escape, only to be captured and given a lobotomy. Unlike the clean white halls of the hospital, their home is inside a very spacious but dirty cave, and there are several signs that show that, despite having their cognitive abilities trashed, they do still possess several human traits. For example, they have constructed beds and sleep together for comfort. They use fire for light and warmth. They have attempted to take advantage of refrigerators to preserve food and ovens to cook said food. Speaking of, there is very little that can actually be eaten at Big Mountain, and as many events in our own history have shown, that when food is scarce, we turn to consuming our dead which they have also done. They have also built a shrine of sorts to the holotape containing the personality module for the toaster. They have gathered many of the kitchen gadgets and offered them up to their god, who is an extremely violent megalomaniac bent on destroying the world with atomic fire, which could be why the lobotomites have turned to it for worship. Perhaps they too wish to burn the world and take the evil eggheads with them. Dr. Klein, on the topic of lobotomites, explains to the courier that they are afraid of the think tank and avoid them at all costs, which could explain why they would turn to what they believe is some great entity capable of achieving what they are unable to and offer up toasters as payment. But this is purely speculation on my part. Also inside the cave is the uniquely named lobotomite, Test Subject 1, who appears to be the lobotomite leader and the very first subject to have been created. Now there isn't much else to say about these unfortunate souls, other than how they feel, and this is revealed to the courier by Christine Royce, who was also lobotomized but managed to escape thanks to Ulysses. According to her own experience and the patient files at the Y-17 medical facility, some of those that were lobotomized felt as if their heads were lit up like a giant light bulb, while others could hear an unbearable amount of static, which is enough to drive anyone mad. But I do believe that they have found a way to cope with their troubles. Many of the lobotomites can be seen wearing high-tech goggles and headphones, perhaps as a way of dimming the light and lessening the incessant static that fills their heads. But the most convincing piece of evidence is the fact that their home, the Cuckoo's Nest, is very close to the X2 transmitter antenna array. This facility is a place that deals with frequencies and signals, some of which may interfere with the Tesla coils inside their heads and lessen or completely repel the static that plagues them. As such, they have built a home nearby and patrol the area to keep it safe from outsiders. The calming nature of the antenna could very well be what has allowed the lobotomites to focus and make a home for themselves and to live somewhat a normal life, where they eat, sleep, and worship together, they have even taken to burying their dead. While this may sound bittersweet, it is no way to live, and we can rest easy knowing that this type of lobotomite is living on borrowed time, thanks to the courier's uniquely scarred brain updating the autodoc, who can now complete the routine as intended. In the meantime, those that still exist will continue to roam and find what comfort they can in a place that is both cold and unforgiving. Well, well, what have we got here? 
Another innocent little toaster. Be sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next adventure.